Hey guys! Recently, I saw Avengers Infinity. Endgame. I saw Avengers Endgame. Why do I keep messing this up? Is anyone else so used to saying Avengers Infinity War that they now mess up the title of Avengers Endgame? Or, or is that just me? Anyways, though, recently I saw Avengers Endgame. End game, and I gotta say that it was pretty amazing, incredible, mighty. I I guess uh, in invincible. Okay, that one doesn't make any sense. Okay, enough with the puns. Let's just say Avengers End Game was awesome because that's that's a word that always works. Anyways, before I continue on with my Avengers Infinity War review, if you guys are new to the channel or I guess haven't seen any of my movie reviews yet, basically what I try to do is first I give you guys my non-spoilery thoughts so that you guys who haven't seen the movie can kind of get a feel of if I liked it or not, which which I did for this one, and kind of if it's a movie that you'd want to see. And after I'm done with my non-spoilery thoughts and I run out of stuff that aren't spoilers to talk about, I move on to the spoilers with an obvious spoiler warning in between. So, let's talk Avengers and Endgame. Let's talk Avengers Endgame. <sighs> Dang it. Now that I got this movie's name straight though, Avengers Endgame was amazing. It was just, oh, it was so perfect, and uh, I, I really enjoyed it. One of the main things that I really like about this movie is, it is the perfect ending for this phase of Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. Now, if you've been living under a rock, or I guess haven't seen any superhero movies for lack of interest, basically, all the Marvel movies up until this point have fit into one universe. Well, well most of them, not, not the X-Men ones. Sorry, X-Men, you'll be here soon. But all the movies other than the X-Men fit into one universe. Like, like all of them happen in the same world and they all affect each other. And th that world's called the Marvel Cinematic Universe, AKA the MCU, the more you know. And Avengers Endgame wraps up all the previous ones before it really, really well. The problem is though, if you're new, I'm not sure I could recommend this movie to you unless you've seen at least one Marvel movie before. Because going in without context kind of will ruin your experience of it. Because I could see a newcomer who haven't seen any Marvel movies come into this one and enjoy it because it's a really good movie, but they won't enjoy it as much as many of us who have seen at least like three of the before ones. And even though it I guess surpassed my expectations, there are a couple things I need to warn you guys about. One, it has a lot of what could be considered at the least conveniences, but at the most major, major plot holes. But if, if you just sit back and enjoy it, you'll enjoy it, I guess. I have really no idea where that sentence was going, but you know what I mean. The second thing I'm gonna warn you about is there is no end credit scene. Now I know some people could consider me saying there's no end credit scene as a spoiler, but that was something I wanted to be warned about when I was going into this movie, okay? The third thing I'm gonna warn you about, this movie, maybe not at this point, because this, this review is coming out kind of late, but this movie was sold out for so many days. And I remember when I was first talking about it, seeing it with my friends, I heard that a lot of theaters were getting sold out for Avengers Endgame. But we live in the middle of nowhere. We saw Star Wars Force Awakens on the opening day and no one was there. So yeah, we're in the middle of nowhere. And so I wasn't really sure if we should pre-order tickets or not. And so I texted out my friends and I'm like, hey guys, should we pre-order tickets? <sighs> Little did I know, half of us pre-ordered tickets and half of us didn't. And apparently the movie sold out. And I know, I know, it's perfectly balanced. This whole thing should be. But come on, I really wanted to see this movie on opening day. What made it even worse was after we went to the front of the line to order tickets and they said it was sold out, we had to walk out and as we looked into the windows of the movie theater because Y you know, most buildings have windows. I see my friend Stu on the other side of the window. And I'm just like, let me in, let me in. Is that meme still relevant? Because 
it's, it's, it's definitely one of my favorites. Anyways though, yeah, I don't know if it applies to you at this point pre-ordering tickets because this review is coming out kind of late, but yeah. If you're worried about it being sold out, pre-order tickets. Anyways though, that is all I have to say for my non-spoilery review. On to the spoiler section. I can't believe that Ant-Man shrunk down, snuck up behind Thanos, and... Who, who am I kidding? Did, did anyone actually think that theory would have a possibility of actually happening in this movie? Because... Cause, Cause I sure didn't. But really though, spoilers ahead. Alright, the thing I was expecting for this movie was a lot, a lot of time travel. I was expecting them to go back in time, and find Infinity Stones, and find them past selves, and relive the greatest movies of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And while they did have a whole ton of that, I was really glad they didn't because when the ending fight came up, it was the coolest thing I've ever seen in a Marvel movie, and I am really, really happy they did not have a whole time travel movie, because I enjoyed the ending, an hour of this movie, way more than I enjoyed like the rest of it. The final fight, though, was laid out amazingly. Captain America is squaring off against past Thanos and all of past Thanos' armies, and all Cap's got it's a broken shield, which is surprising because it's made out of vibranium, and he's also got Thor's hammer. Again, an amazing reveal, but we're not done yet. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, Cap is not going to survive this. I know he has Thor's hammer, but it's really improbable at this point. And I was expecting him to say something like, I can do this all day, but then portals start opening up around him. And then you hear Falcon say, on your left. And so out of these portals come pouring Wakandans, as guardians, Doctor Strange's like wizard buddies. They also got many of the famous superheroes. They got Black Panther, Spider-Man, the Guardians, um, who else? Who else am I missing? Uh, the Wasp! The Wasp is in this movie! Like, I thought she wasn't, but she isn't! Ah! And so all these heroes start pouring out, and they're all just like, Thanos, we're ready for one last fight! And I'm just like, Ooh. I guess it's not only the Marvel villains that have CGI armies in these movies. And yeah, I know after they brought everyone back to life, I probably should have been thinking, where's Black Panther? Where's Spider-Man? What happened when they were brought back? Why aren't they coming to help the Avengers? But I didn't. I forgot they brought all these characters back, and I was so... So surprised to see them all coming out through the portals, and I think this is like the greatest moment in Marvel history. I know I'm like overreacting a whole lot, but this is my favorite, favorite part of this movie. My second favorite part is when Captain America picks, picks up Thor's hammer, obviously, because we've been waiting for that, and everyone's been thinking about it, and I wasn't so sure. But it happened. My third favorite part was probably when... Hulk goes back in time and talks to the Ancient One about taking the Time Stone and whatnot. Because, yeah, this part doesn't have much significance, and I'm not a huge fan of the Ancient One, but I like how they included her, and it makes these movies fit together a lot better. Although maybe my third favorite part was actually Tony's interactions with his daughter, because it was so, it was so cute and precious. Speaking of Tony and his daughter, her name is Morgan Stark in this movie, and... The Morgan Stark kind of like triggered something in my mind of all my comic book knowledge and I'm like, man, that sounds really familiar. So I looked it up to see if it was a reference for something. And so originally I thought it was this future Iron Man from the year 2021, but apparently that's Arno Stark, so it's, it's, it's not the same person. Apparently Morgan Stark, after some intense research, is Tony Stark's cousin. Yeah, kind of lame. I have no idea why Tony even named his daughter after this dude, because let's face it, he made even a less impact on his life than his own father. And Tony's father was barely in his life. Plus, Morgan didn't even appear for his own cousin's funeral? I mean, you name your daughter after someone and you hope they, like, care about you or something, but nope. So yeah, I don't know if Morgan Stark was named after Morgan Stark, but... 
Yeah, I, I thought it was pretty interesting. Speaking of Iron Man's funeral, though, as they're going through all the characters and all the teams, they look at, like, Captain America and his crew, and they go to, like, I think it's Hawkeye and his family, then they go to Ant-Man and his family, they look at the Guardians, and then the camera pans over to this random teenager. And me, with all my Marvel movie knowledge, did not have a clue at who this teenager was. And I had friends asking me, they're just like, hey, hey, who's that guy? And I had no idea, and I felt so terrible, so... I I had to look it up myself for that one too. And apparently, this is the same kid from Iron Man 3. Nice touch, Marvel. I like what you did there even though nobody understood it. But on to a topic that confused me even more. The time travel. The time travel was all over the place. I can accept the convenience of a rat stepping on a button, freeing Ant-Man from the quantum realm. I can completely roll with Siri figuring out all the basics of time travel with, like, minimal input from Tony Stark. But oh sure, the Ancient One won't give up the Time Stone to send to the future in case the timeline will collapse, but when they kill past Thanos and all his army, no one bats an eye. So yeah, the time travel in this movie is all over the place, and I don't know about you guys, but I had a lot of trouble understanding the way they explained it. So I've heard it explained in two different ways. Number one, I think the way they were trying to explain it in the movie and the way that I've heard everybody else explain it to me, YouTubers and friends alike, is basically that the Avengers aren't traveling back in time to their own timeline, but apparently traveling back in time to another timeline. And sure, I guess that makes sense. And I guess the plot holes of letting Loki escape in the Battle of New York and completely killing Thanos twice kind of makes sense if you think Thanos is from another timeline, but I really don't believe that Avengers would be okay with completely wrecking someone else's timeline to save people from their own. Plus, how does the Captain America going back in time to Becky Carter work if... He stays there and lives for the rest of his life in another timeline? Does he just jump back to this one? I mean, if he did with the quantum suit, because he'd still have it, he'd probably just appear on the quantum stand again? I, I don't see how that works. The other theory, which is the one I kind of believe, which makes a little more sense, is basically that, yes, they're time traveling back to their own timeline, but whatever they do doesn't affect their present state. Yeah, I know it's a cop-out, but I guess it kind of works, and that's, that's what I got out of this movie. Hopefully, though, I'm planning to, when this movie comes out, get it out on DVD, watch it a little more, understand it, and maybe make my own theory video on how these time travel shenanigans even work. But until then, that is all I have to say for this review. I hope you guys enjoyed Avengers Infinity War Endgame. I hope you guys enjoyed Avengers Endgame, and I hope you enjoyed this review, and let me know in the comments below your favorite parts from the movie, except try not to spoil it for anybody. I'm not sure that makes any sense, but anyways though, thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video.